This is the Behringer's B-Control Fader BCF2000 control surface, which has eight motorized faders, rotary knobs, and lots of buttons and options to be able to control your DAW while mixing a song. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the BCF2000 to connect to your PC or your laptop and then set it up in Cubase AI 8. The first thing we need to do is set up the BCF2000 to a mode that Cubase AI 8 can understand and communicate with. We need to set up the BCF2000. The most effective one is the Baby HUI mode. To enable in Baby HUI mode, we first press the fifth button from the top row and while holding it down, we turn the power on. We will briefly see the version number and it will actually say BHUI and currently now in an edit mode. Next thing we need to do is use the rotary knobs to adjust the setting. The one that we really interested in is the first knob that adjusts the communication mode which has U124 and S124. The one we liked, I would like to set it up with, which works the best, is in U-3 mode. You can pretty much leave the rest of the options as they are. So we click the ed exit button to exit the edit mode. And now we're in baby HUI mode. So now the BCF2000 is ready to talk to our PC and Cubase AI 8. In Cubase AI8, or technically in any version of uh, Cubase, I guess 6 and up, this is the procedure is pretty much the same. So I'm just going to add a default demo project. Just going to select Dance Production and create the project. So we now have the project up and going. To set up the device, the BCF2000, we just simply go into Devices and down to device setup and in MIDI port we should be able to see three ports of BCF2000 that is because how we have it set up when we initialize the BCF2000 the actual control unit if you recall we used U for USB-3 this not only allows us to communicate to the USB uh, as a MIDI device but it also allows us to control any MIDI device connected to the output A and B of the 5-pin DIN MIDI connectors on the actual control surface BCF2000. As we can see, MIDI in is active and the outs are at the currently are inactive, which is fine. So next, we click the plus sign to add a new device. From the drop-down list, we select McKee Baby HUI. From here, with the pull down menu, we select port 1 for MIDI input and for MIDI output, again the same as port 1. And we apply. As, as you can see, the faders already adjusted their levels to whatever the setting of this demo project was. So let's just quickly open up the mixer, and that's our mixer section. Move this out of the way. So that resembles now exactly what's on there. So we should be able to, by moving sliders, as you can see now, it can slide up and down on the screen. And if I move, take the mouse and move the third slider, and as you can see, the fader on the BCF2000 also moves. At the same time, if we take the third channel and use the panning control, the rotary, you can see we can adjust the panning of that track left or right. There are a few other options as well. The bottom button there, if we press it, that will mute that track. And we can mute multiple tracks. and the top row of buttons are for soloing. 
So that's soloing track four and track three and so on. There's another option. The rotary switches also have a button. By pressing, you actually engage in record mode. So now, as you can see at the bottom here, it's record enabled, so armed for recording. And you can enable that as well. So it has lots of great options, so you can quickly solo a track, mute a track, arm for recording, use the faders, as well as the rotary to adjust as you are mixing. So let's quickly do automation in one of the tracks. That's the drum track. I should mention that we have the play and stop, fast forward and rewind options here as well. Uh, as you can see by pressing this button here, we can start playing. And then stop. Back to the beginning. You can scroll forward and backwards and so on. And if we had more tracks than seven, so by pressing the preset button here, we can actually move eight banks of eight faders at a time. So if we had more than uh, seven or eight, well, seven tracks here, so if we had more tracks, obviously you'll be able to adjust them and move the eight tracks. So let's do some automation. In Cubase, to do automation, you can right click on the track and say show automation. Move this out of the way. And that's our volume automation. But clicking on it, you can select any of the other options available. Like panning would be another great automation uh, to choose. So let's click on right automation. Go back to the beginning. So now, as the track is playing, I'll be able to adjust the fader on BCF2000 and we should be able to see automation go up and down. And when we play it back, the fader will automatically follow up the automation that we just recorded. So let's just do that. So now we have an automation curve. We can go in and edit it if we like to. Let's just remove it out of from writing it. So green, now we're just going to read and follow that. And press play. You be able to see the fader magically move and follow the automation. So simple as that. Well, I hope this was helpful. If it was, give me the thumbs up. Now you know how to actually get your BCF2000 connected to um, your PC and then running in Cubase AI 8 or any version of Cubase. Also, don't forget uh, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you get updated with any new videos that I upload on my channel. You can also visit my website, Recording Studio 9. Dot com. There's a whole heap of more information there as well. And until next time, as always, have a great time making music. Cheerio.